Hey guys, how's it going today? So I just finished working on my Ram truck. I got the whole front suspension and everything else done. There's a video coming out for that shortly. Uh, but one thing I wanted to point out, um, it, over the years, I've had a number of people give me different uh, points on cotter pins and what cotter pins are actually used for. Now, cotter pins are technically a redundant system, basically to keep the nut or whatever that it's retaining to keep it from possibly backing off. It's not there to take place of torquing something correctly or something being tightened correctly. It's just there as a, hey, just in case this thing backs up, we need something to stop it. That's all it's there for. So there's a couple of questions that have been pointed out to me over the years and a couple of people have given different points of why they do what they do and oh, this is the right way and this is the wrong way, blah, 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 blah. Let me show you what I do with cotter pins, and maybe it'll help you guys figure out what you want to do. So here's a cotter pin in place before I pin it over. As you see, this one's loose. Sometimes you get them where they are tight because when they fit into the castellated area of the nut, they just fit snugly in there. This fits loose. Okay, so some people will take the cotter pin and bend it downward like so and flip it around and, you know, to get this end all the way up here like this. But now, technically, you have a loose cotter pin. Now, what's wrong with that? Really not much. But here's the point. Technically, if it's like this, and you have an ultra-quiet car, you might be able to hear that rattle. I've actually had a customer one time, years ago, complaining of a tinny, rattly noise when they're rolling along next to a guardrail. And the only thing we could figure out, it was one of the cotter pins. It just had to be a quite noisy and we basically repositioned it in a way that made it so it stops rattling and the customer never came back so it's the only thing we could think of was that so i've seen people do it that way i've seen people put the cotter pin sideways like this and flip it this way and this way okay what i do in a situation like this where it is kind of a loose fit i will actually grab a pair of cutting pliers let me grab a pair of cutting pliers Now, cutting pliers, dikes, whatever you want to call them. So I will grab a pair and I will do this. And I will bring it sideways across like this. Okay? Now, can you reuse cotter pins? That's a good question. Why not? It's just a redundant piece. So there it's not going to rattle. It's nice and tight. Also, if they're rattling around, think about it over time, if they're rattling around, they could possibly wear and fall out. I'm not saying it's ever going to happen. I'm not saying I've ever seen it happen. Just it's always a possibility. It's always something that's there. So now it's nice and tight. It's not going to go anywhere. That's what I do. That's how I'm going to leave it. You can see that one over there too. But now the question comes, can you reuse a cotter pin? Why not? Why not? If it didn't break, who cares? It's just a redundant piece to keep the nut from falling off. Now, if I'm trying to think if, if there's any situation where I've ever run into where the cotter pin was what was holding something together, and I've never actually seen that. Other than when you're dealing with like front wheel bearings that use that you have to preload with a castellated nut and then put a cotter pin through. I mean those. If you do it the right way and you preload the bearing the right way, technically that nut shouldn't back itself off, but the cotter pin is definitely required there. So I think that's the only time I would make sure that I used a new one. Although if there's nothing wrong with it, if, you, if it's straightened out and is still working fine, when you put it back in place, what's the problem? It's just there to keep the nut from moving any further. That's all. It's not like it's going to put a load on it. It's not like all of a sudden the nut's going to get 200 foot pounds of torque on it to twist and break the cotter pin. Ain't gonna happen. So anyway, just my food for thought. I could be wrong. I didn't look any of this up. This is just what I've been doing for years. Been doing it for 40 years now. So 39 years. Yeah, something like that. Well, professionally, I've been, I've been technically turning wrenches since I was 13. Um, I started doing this when I was nine with my dad, uh, but technically turning wrenches on my own since I was 13 and then professionally from when I was 16. So. When I was in high school, this is not a joke. When I was in high school and I got into auto shop, before I had my license, 
after a couple of classes, the teacher took me to the side and he says, I can't teach you anything. He goes, and he wasn't being a, a smart aleck because of who I was or anything. He's saying, you already have it up here. You know what you're doing. He would, he would have classes going and he'd have me working on his car in the shop. And, and I was, what, 14, 15 years old at the time? So, yeah, kind of interesting. But it's the truth. I'm not making that up. Um, love that man to death, Smitty, White Plains High School. Anyway, um, but yeah, that's it. Hope you got something out of my video. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.